we want to try to keep our belly button on this midline. We don't necessarily want any crossing over, so we want a nice arm pump. Foot just on the other side of the target line. That's our pre-delivery takeoff. We're looking to jump, set, land with our foot on the, on the line or just to the right-hand side of the line with our back foot and then our front foot contact comes through and lands and we're in a nice, strong base position here. Our front arm is, is key in making sure that we keep our momentum going forward. So we wanna try and reach out and try and grab, whether it be the, the batsman's grill, and then you wanna try and pull the batsman back in, which ultimately gets your shoulders rotating up and over. Which as much as possible, you wanna try and keep right pocket, right shoulder, straight down, turn and through. Cricket Love Stories with me, Neil Kagram. We're at the indoor school here at Kent with Simon Cook, bowling coach. Simon, how's it going? Yeah, it's going, going well. Busy season, uh, just come to the end. So we're uh, into October now. So the uh, um, focus turns to indoor preparation and, and what's going to happen next year. So Simon, you're going to give us some bowling drills, some tips for all young cricketers. Before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about your career. You played for Middlesex and Kent. Run us through it. Yeah, that's right. Um, started sort of way back in 1997. That seems like an age ago now um, with, uh, with Middlesex. Uh, had uh, eight great years at, at Middlesex and, and learned a lot. I loved living in London. Uh, ultimately, London, the busy life, um, sort of kind of got to me in the end um, and ended up making a move down here to, to Canterbury. Um, and again, had a really another great eight years here. Um, so very lucky to have a 16-year career as a bowler. I think that's, uh, that's pretty good. I was, uh, I was very happy with that. And then the move into coaching, Hong Kong? Yeah, I mean, coaching was always one of the things I wanted to do. Um, certainly back when I was playing at Middlesex, I coached on the, uh, on the academy there and in the pathway. Uh, carried that on when I moved here to, here to Kent. Uh, and when I retired uh, in 2012, I really wanted to try and get a bit more experience, more of, of kind of management and building teams and structures. Um, and so the op option of, of working with Hong Kong uh, at the time didn't have ODI status and T20 status uh, was, was great. And it gave us a really good uh, target to work towards, which we achieved. Um, and, and we were able to then um, you know, go and play in some two World, World T20 events, uh, an Asia Cup, and, and also play ODIs again against some, some of the big Asian nations. And then back here now at Kent, as I said at the top, the bowling coach, have you found it? Yeah, very, very good to come back. I mean, it was one thing that I really wanted to do after taking on a, a general role was, was to become, come back and become a bit more of a specialist in, in, the, in the specialism, which, which I love, which is bowling. Um, and to be able to come back to, to a, a club that I know and, and love and have had success here and, and to help these next crop of, of young bowlers uh, have the same success um, is something that I really, really uh, wanted to do and, and look forward to do. Um, and so far, we're, we're on the right path. Simon, perfect. Can't wait to get into these bowling drills, tips and advice you have for all cricketers. Let's go. Keep it simple uh, is one of my, my core principles. Um, so with this drill, momentum drill, uh, is one of those things that really gives you some really good feedback on, on your run up and approach to the crease, which is where a lot of problems happen, which end up getting snowballed into bigger problems when you come to, to let go of the ball. So what we've got here is we've got a tape which runs round from the bottom of off stump all the way back to your run up. And this represents the ideal momentum line for you to get your, the biggest parts of your body going towards off stump. So that's your head, the, your belly button, your bum, all work going towards off stump, which is ultimately where we, we want the ball to go. So what are we looking for in this? Ideally, we wanna try and have our midline on, the, on the, the tape, so our feet either side, and our run up will move towards, towards the stumps, and we wanna to try to 
keep our belly button on this midline. We don't necessarily want any crossing over, so we want a nice arm pump, good presentation of the ball until we get to pre-delivery jump. Okay, so we've arrived at just before the stump, so pre-delivery takeoff. Our run-up has been nice and progressive. Uh, we've got good momentum towards the target. And what's happening now is we're preparing to bowl. So this is where a number of things can go potentially wrong if the run-up back there has been slightly off. What we're trying to do here, again, same thing, foot just on the other side of the target line. That's our pre-delivery takeoff. We're looking to jump, set, land with our foot on the, on the line or just to the right-hand side of the line with our back foot and then our front foot contact comes through and lands and we're in a nice strong base position here with, which allows us to really generate a lot of force down towards that target. Okay, so from release, we're looking to drive forwards towards off stump. Okay, our back hip has come through and we're looking again to try and keep our, our follow through, our shoulder rotation. Our back hip and foot is following through on our momentum line. It's the first time really that both feet are on the same side of that momentum line. And then once you've bowled the ball, let go of the ball, you can go off where, wherever you need to. Okay, so left-handers. It can, also, can be a problem for right arm over bowlers in particular to bowl at a, a left-hander from over the wicket. Um, so what are the differences in our momentum line? Well, all, we tr all we're doing is very simply moving half a step to the left, which creates our angle back towards off stump. Then we've got our tape and we run it all the way back. So we're now on our midline. And then we just run straight the way, follow our momentum line again, down towards off stump. Okay, so once we get to the business end here, once we've uh, approached, um, approached the crease, bowling at a left-hander, um, we're up and we're into our back foot contact position. And then once we get through again, we're into our front foot contact position, our good release position. Uh, the really important thing from this position when you're bowling at a left-hander is to make sure that you keep your right hip engaged in your action for a fraction longer. That means you'll be able to keep the ball going down towards the off stump for a lot longer and you can actually end up with your foot, you can, in your training drills, you end up trying to end up with your foot on the right side of your momentum line. That will allow you to keep momentum going towards the off stump. What we see quite often when right arm over bowlers bowl at, right, at left handers is they'll get up into this position and then we'll go too quickly and end up pushing the ball across. And you typically find that left, uh, right arm over bowlers will bowl two, two to three miles an hour slower at left-handers than they will at right-handers because they're not keeping their, their momentum behind the ball for that fraction of a second longer. Okay, so a couple of errors which we commonly see uh, in, in the run-up. Um, so first thing is we start here and we can all start in a great place. Um, but the first thing that we can kind of see is if people are crossing over our momentum line, okay? So that will cause rocking in your upper body, uh, which in turn, once you get towards the crease, will then cause a bit more instability because once you jump, if you're not jumping towards the target, you're gonna be jumping either left or right, and then you're gonna have a bit of a problem when you land because you're gonna have to readjust. Another problem could be rocking from side to side with our arms. So that again causes a bit of instability and we're going across our midline. So again, just to reiterate what we're trying to do, we want everything to be trying to go in straight lines as much as possible. Okay, another classic error that we, we tend to see uh, is bowlers will start this approach nicely, but then suddenly we'll start to drift off slightly and then realize and then they have to come back in just as they get to pre-delivery uh, takeoff. Okay, so. Taking our last point about um, having a bit of a curve in your, in your run-up. So once you actually get to pre-delivery pre uh, jump, as you've started to come back in towards the stumps, your momentum is now going towards fine leg. It's not going towards off stump. So what will happen is once you take off, you're in the air, momentum is going down towards fine leg. 
The issue will now be that you'll land in a, in a good place, uh, back foot contact, but the problem is your momentum is going down towards fine leg and you actually want to get it back towards the stumps. So what tends to happen is our heads and our arms tend to start leaking out because we've got to try and get the ball back onto the target. And that's when we see a lot of bowlers leaning off towards, towards the side. A lot of momentum starts going off the side of the ball. And we start to see those inconsistencies in line and length. Okay, so if we've approached in along our momentum line, it's gone well, and then suddenly we get both feet inside the momentum line. Again, our momentum is going out towards, um, or down towards, fine leg. We then got to try and jump out, which your body tries to do. And then we end up on the other side. And then now we're trying to get back onto the target, which is now going to be quite difficult because our top half will be going towards now third man. And we got to try and end up trying to go back towards the stumps, which ultimately ends up the ball going down leg side. So we end up with this zigzag effect where we're coming in, jump in, jump out, jump in again, and then try and bowl. And this zigzag happens very, very quickly, and it's quite small, that's very exaggerated, but it has a tremendously negative effect on you being able to consistently release the ball from, from this position with your wrist behind the ball all the time. It becomes very... Okay, other variations we can, we can use um, are our crease variations. So whether we're bowling close or wide, and that variation really is, is a determined by your momentum line. That's your comfort, comfort line, that's your main position. Okay, and we've set it up here with these yellow stri orange strips. Uh, this is the variation. So ultimately all we're doing is we're just taking our momentum line and we're shifting it a little bit to the left and making sure we're still landing in or around our momentum line. One thing you'll notice there is actually I'm off balance because I got too tight on that, on that back foot contact. So really important to make sure that when you do go wider the crease, that we're not ending up crossing over with our feet or we're not ending up too wide because it starts interfering with everything else. Okay, so we've spoken a lot uh, about momentum and, and our lower body. Uh, but what does it actually mean for our upper body? Um, so once we get into our back foot contact position, uh, and then into our front foot contact position, again, making sure our, our feet are correctly aligned. Um, we need to make sure that our top half is working efficiently. Okay, so it means our, our front arm is, is key in making sure that we keep our momentum going forward. So we want to try and reach out and try and grab, whether it be the, the batsman's grill, and then you want to try and pull the batsman back in, which ultimately gets your shoulders rotating up and over which will give you that snap and it also ensure that you've got that really nice wrist position. It also helps get the ball slightly fuller and that is a key if you're particularly bowling with the new ball and you want to be trying to swing it and, and nicking off a, a right-handed batter. If you can get that out and the snap, you become a, a very, very effective bowler. So the other thing about the top half is this bit, so ball path. Where does the ball go? So we discussed in our, in our run-up that if the ball is going all over the place here through your run-up, it creates instability and becomes difficult to, to be consistent. Same thing once you, you take off and land at back foot contact. If your ball is underneath your armpit, the ball will have to go out for you then to get back online to bowl the ball. Now at pace, that becomes very difficult to be consistent. So you, you see the, this sort of action. That's when you get twisting in your back and that can lead to potential injuries. So as much as possible, you wanna try and keep right pocket, right shoulder, straight down, turn and through. That's your ball path, essentially. You want to try and keep it. Do not cross your midline. Straight down, turn, and through. Okay, right arm round the wicket to a left-handed batter. Um, it's something that's come into the game over the last few years uh, as a very effective angle. Um, 
couple of differences here. So again, we've got our momentum line and the, and the principle is still the same. But actually our momentum line is, instead of being lined up at off stump, our momentum line is lined up at the keeper or the keeper's left knee. And the reason why I like to do this um, is so that we get a good position on the crease at release. So I'm still in a nice, nice solid, solid position. But because we're round the wicket, our momentum and what we want to do, because we're twisting like this, we want to go that way. But actually, if we lined up to off stump, I would actually end up running straight across the pitch, um, which we're not allowed to do. So we line up our momentum towards the keeper's left knee, and it allows us then to still have the ball traveling down that line. And if it swings in, it's gonna swing in to hit the top of the top of off stump. Or we can again get our wobbled seam, but with the angle that we've created, it means the batters are actually drawn in to the ball coming down. And then if it nips away, you bring your slips into play. So key thing with bowling around the wicket to the left-handed is making sure we line up your momentum with the keeper's left knee. Okay, so once we've established a good wrist position, a uh, good release position, and our momentum flowing towards the target, um, our attention turns to this elusive area, the, the good area that everyone, everyone refers to. Um, in first class cricket, international cricket, it's between generally four to six meters. I would say in, in uh, club cricket, you want to be a slightly bit fuller because the pitches are slightly um, a bit softer and the ball does a little bit more. Um, so you want to be at ever so slightly fuller, probably more kind of three to six, uh, three to five meters. Um, what we talk about in first class cricket here is not only the ability to hit this area, but it's how you work this area. And that's what we're going to focus on next. As we said before, it's a general area and we talk about it generally, but actually the better bowlers start to cut this up. So whether we operate at back of a length or full of a length, or whether it's swinging a lot, in which case if it's swinging out for a right armor face to a right-handed batter, you might end up operating on this side of the box. Whereas if you're an in-swinger or a left armor, you might operate on that side of the box. The other disciplines in there, we talk about wobble seam. So we see the modern batter now, batting generally on middle, middle and off, maybe even off stump quite a lot of the time. And what's happened particularly in England is the wobbled seam has come into fashion, which means you operate on this side of the box and you're looking just to nip it back in to take, take out the batter's sort of off stump um, or pad, ideally. Um, so we just start to divide this up. And as we get better and better and better, uh, you can start having little games within this little box and you can start making your own Hawkeyes by chalking, chalking the balls and understanding where, your, where your, your balls are landing. Bowling at a left-hander, um, if you're swinging the ball back into the left-hander, again, you're going to be operating on, on the right side of this box. Again, depending on how much it's swinging. If it's swinging a lot, you might be quite far out. If it's not swinging so much, uh, you'll be more in the middle. And if you want a wobble seam and nip it across, then you're probably going to be around the kind of middle, middle and off line with the ball nipping across.